Writing content that converts for your website is more straightforward than you think. In this lesson, I'm going to give you five secrets on how to write content that converts for your website to increase your traffic, your conversions, your revenue, and the overall user experience for your readers. Let's check it out. Quick reminder to check out the links in the video description below, including the training I owe all my success to create your free starter account and get me as your support coach. What's up YouTube, Eric from workfromyourlaptop.com here, writing content that converts for your website. This is one of those critical elements when you're building your online business. Why? Because content is king. At the end of the day, content is what builds your traffic, your revenue, your conversions. And for so many beginners that are just starting off, sometimes you, you don't really have a direction. You're sitting there saying, what am I supposed to write about? How am I supposed to write about this? What, you know, what makes the audience think that this is good? Is my opinion valid? All these elements can be kind of confusing for the beginner, but what I'm gonna share with you are some really straightforward methods to creating that content that brings your audience back for more, that makes them want to follow, want to subscribe, and most importantly, want to convert and take action and create revenue for your website. So, creating the best user experience for your readers, even though we're gonna be covering topics and talking about how to write content that converts for your website, these uh, actionable steps and techniques are really good no matter what platform, whether you're talking about social media, creating content on YouTube, all these things still apply. But for this focus, uh, today we're gonna focus on creating content that converts for your website. What are we gonna learn in this class? We're gonna see why mastering a simple, direct approach to your writing is so important. We're gonna learn some simple SEO secrets that you may be missing, very critical, because not only do we want our content to convert, we need our content to rank, right? Once it's ranking, that's how we can get the most potential eyes on it. Then once they click into that content, now we have them. Now they're in our arena and we need to be able to get this traffic, the, our readers, to take action depending on our niche, whatever that action may be, maybe clicking on an affiliate link, maybe making a purchase, what have you. Is your content browsable for finding quick answers? Creating engagement is everything. We're gonna see why that's so important. How aesthetics can complement your content and lead to conversions. And then finally, how to go next level with the overall user experience. As always, I have the chapters for this uh, laid out down in the video description below. If you are a affiliate marketing beginner or you are an online business website building beginner, I definitely recommend watching this maybe more than once. So I have all the chapters down below. If you're watching this and you're taken away from it, you can click on the chapter, get directly to the answer you're looking for. Or if you're watching this again, you want to review it and look for a specific answer, you don't have to try and find it. Click on those chapters down below for easy navigation mastering a simple direct approach do you know the kiss principle k-i-s-s -S. keep it simple stupid i prefer stupid but some people say keep it simple silly <laughs> keep it simple uh stanley whatever uh keeping it simple is the best way uh, simplicity is actually uh many in many opinions uh elegant sleek when you over saturate things with too many things going on that's where you can actually lose your audience right so when we're creating an article and we're going to show you examples of this uh, don't beat around the bush as we're going to cover in a little bit your audience has a very short attention span <laughs> extremely extremely short on the online community this isn't like someone who's opening a book who's invested into this book and who's probably going to try and read this from start to finish where in the beginning you can really lay out the overall context of everything. Not so in an article that you're writing. You need to get right to the point. I'm gonna show you some examples of that. You need to let your audience know right away that they're in the right place and then answer the question, which is usually the title of the article, what you're gonna, you know, the topic of discussion. Answer it 
directly, make it easy for them to see. You know, some people think, well, I, I don't want them to see the answer right away. I want them to go a little bit deeper into the article. You have to change that mindset, right? That is not a winning mindset. You need to think value. I need to give this value right away because only when they get that value in those first few seconds will they even continue to go and look at what the rest of your content is. All that hard work, building up that content, you don't want it to go uh, into the abyss of the internet never to be read. You want your audience, create that value right out the gate, let them know that they're in the right spot, and then they will continue and investigate further. Never use clickbait. If you have this title that is, you know, you're using this, maybe you're using ChatGPT to create an awesome title to get people to click on it when you're ranking, you know, what's gonna separate yours from the other articles just like it. Great titles are obviously important, but, if you use like clickbait, like a bait and switch where it makes them come in and then they get to your article and they see right away, wait a minute, this isn't what I'm looking for. Guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna bounce. The second you start having a really high bounce rate, bounce rate, if you're not familiar with is obviously, uh, or maybe not so obviously if you're a beginner, uh, the percentage of users that arrive at a page on your website and then bounce without even clicking on any other page in your website, right? In other words, they get there, they say, this isn't what I want, and they bounce. When you have a high bounce rate, well then Google starts to realize, hey, this person's content, why am I gonna rank this as a good quality answer to a search when everyone's arriving and leaving? It must not have value. You need to keep your audience in tune with your website, keep them there, keep them there longer, have them be interested in checking out what else you have, clickbait will totally wreck that kind of uh, situation. Once you've directly answered the question at hand, answer it directly right at the top, now you can elaborate, right? And when you elaborate, you wanna be thorough. Even though, like I just said, your audience, and it's, we're actually gonna talk about the exact percentage, it is strikingly low. The actual percentage of your content that uh, your audience actually reads, very low. However, we don't know which area of our content that they are focusing in. So we need to make sure we are thorough. We need to answer the who, the what, when, where, why, how. And depending on your content, the type of content, if you're doing like a how-to tutorial, well then obviously you need to focus on how to get from one step to the next, why each step is important. Think about it. You see this a lot on YouTube where it's a how-to, where they're saying step one, do this, step two. Your audience, especially when they're reading something, they wanna know okay, this makes sense. This is a very linear path. We're going from step one to step two and explain why each step is important because if you have a step that you're not explaining, you're not giving enough context, like I said, being thorough, your audience right away is gonna say, is this even necessary? Do I even need this step? This person doesn't know what they're talking about. Just be thorough. You are the authority here, right? You know how to do something that your audience does not know how to, in this case, for how-to tutorials. So, you know, own that and just simply explain each step because when you're explaining it, especially, like I said, uh, even though we're con concentrating on writing content for your website, all this can apply like to YouTube, to social media content as well, especially through video, when you're explaining something and showing them, and as you're showing them, showing them why it's important, that kind of burns it into their memory, right? For informational content, like an article on your website, why is this info relevant to your niche? How does this improve your business? You're answering a question, right? Answering the topic at hand, but your audience needs to understand why this is important. This is how you can, so, many, so often when people are brand new starting off, they, they answer the question and then they say, what else am I supposed to write about? How do I fill this uh, content? How do I fill this page with say a thousand words? Once you start realizing, okay, let me just be thorough within each step, it makes that process a lot easier. Before you know it, you look up and you've typed out 800, 1,000, even 1,500 words and that whole hurdle that you couldn't quite get past, oh, I can never get past 500 words. Suddenly, when you just start thinking about the who, what, when, why, where, how, you are able to reach those thresholds. For product reviews, be thorough. What are the costs involved? Think 
like your reader, right? What are they wanting to see here? So often when we're doing product reviews, I think too many times we concentrate on uh, we concentrate on the sales, right? You're like, let me sell this, let me sell this, as I'm gonna show you a little bit later. Selling is kind of the opposite of what you wanna do. You wanna show someone, you don't wanna sell them, right? So what are the costs involved? What are the its key features, the pros, the cons? Think as the user, the end user, what is it that they're wanting to see? They wanna see, is this product uh, a good purchase, what are its benefits, what are its features. So get to the point with that. Don't try so hard to sell, simply show the value. And obviously that's what's gonna keep your audience there. They're gonna stay on your side. They're gonna start respecting the authority that you have for your niche. Some examples, let's, uh, let's jump out of this really quick and we will go to workfromyourlaptop.com. Let's just go here to the blog and a random, let's just start off here. Can you make money embedding YouTube videos? Just a sample uh, article that I wrote. Right out the gate, I like to have this image and this title right away now. Obviously in my particular website, I kind of hide the title itself because I have this image and it becomes redundant, right? But you wanna have a nice bold title or image explaining right away why they're here. Am I in the right place? If they've clicked on this article, can you make money embedding YouTube videos? Okay, this is what I want. This is the question I made the search for. This is obviously gonna answer it. And then right away, a real quick little intro paragraph. We don't want to tell a long story. We want to get to the point. Remember, don't beat around the bush. Get to the point. Real quick little, in this case, just a couple of sentences. I've said it once and I'll say it again, your audience loves video. They see an embedded video on your website and they can't help but press play. So how can you use YouTube to boost your website's traffic? Can you make money embedding YouTube videos? Can you do this without uploading videos of your own? You're creating this little bit of a, a tease as to what's to come, but then you'll notice right here, right away, I got a table of contents here for easy navigation, but then right away, here is the question. Can you make money embedding YouTube videos? Bold, to the point, then here's your answer right away. If you think about it, when you, had arri when you arrive at a post like this, this little intro paragraph, you're pretty much, I mean, you know, you very well may read it, but more than likely you take a look at this and you start to scroll, right? You start to skip a little bit and you want that answer right away. So imagine arriving here, you see, okay, I'm in the right place. You got here because maybe you made a Google search of can you make money embedding YouTube videos? Then right away, here's my answer. Can you make money embedding YouTube videos? Then a direct, concise answer. While you can't earn YouTube ad revenue by embedding videos that aren't your own, you can in fact earn revenue by embedding relevant YouTube videos into your website and monetizing targeted traffic through ads and earning conversions through affiliate marketing. Here I'm giving the answer they're looking for and now with the rest of this article, we simply explain those points. Understanding YouTube video embedding. Here I have a nice little YouTube video embedded, obviously. Your audience loves video, more on that in a second. How video enhances the user experience. How to profit from embedded YouTube videos. Tips and tricks for effective video embedding. What to avoid when monetizing. You see very easy to read, bold headlines, and then your final thoughts kind of, again, nice, simple, bold answer. This is what you want in a website because when they arrive, if you start off telling some long story, if you don't let them know right away that they're in the right place, they're simply going to bounce, right? Their attention span is <laughs> extremely, extremely small. I think I cover it right here. Your audience wants quick answers. Pop quiz, did you know on average, what percentage of your total content does your audience read? Think about this. In a typical article that put yourself in the, in the users, the readers, the audience's shoes, when you jump into an article, what percentage of the total content do you read? Think about it. 14%, that is extremely low. Attention span, most readers only spend about 15 seconds 
on a given web page. Now, before you start crying and thinking, oh, all this hard work that I've been doing and creating all this great content, these great subheadings, not to worry, right? Because we don't know which aspect of the article our audience is going to, right? But different people, depending on their needs, depending on the questions they have, some are gonna go to that first subheading. Some are gonna maybe go over here, ah, oh, the second and third really speak to me. As long as you get to the point, you let them know, hey, I have the answer here. Here's your answer. And in the case, in the way I do it, I have like a nice little answer highlighted box. Then we're going to elaborate with the rest of the content. That is the key. Now your audience maybe is gonna, they're gonna scroll, they're gonna skim, they're gonna look for those bold headings, right? And then when they find a heading that is interesting to them and what they're looking for, now they're gonna investigate with the rest of those paragraphs within that subheading. Maybe that subheading leads them into the next one as your article flows. Maybe they stay a little longer than 15 seconds, maybe, through some internal linking, you have some relevant content. They say they get their answer and say, hey, there's something here relevant. You wanna learn about this? Check out this article. That is how we want to create our content. It's like having a brick and mortar traditional store, right? When we walk into a store, the, the stuff we want, there is a science to the way that store is laid out. It's not just, okay, get this and leave. There is a science to how the path you're taking as you're getting to those things you want, all these extras that are kind of screaming to you, hey, buy me, buy me. At the very end when you're checking out the candy there, there is a science to this. They've seen you coming and now the whole point is seeing how many interesting things you can see that you maybe wanna purchase with your website they're walking into your store. You're giving them the answer. Hey, I know you want this, but oh, by the way, come a little further, come a little further. The deeper they go into your website, the more chance they have of having of becoming a conversion and making a purchase, depending on your niche and depending on what the intent of your website is, right? Your audience wants those quick answers. So like we said, make your content easy to skim so your audience can find those quick answers. Table of contents plugin. Let's jump out really quick and we'll jump back to uh, Wealthy, I mean, we'll jump back to workfromyourlaptop.com and right away within all my content, uh, in fact, I'll jump to another, we already looked at this article. Let's go to, uh, let's just do this one. Wealthy Affiliate Hosting Review, another article. You see here, same type of setup right away nice bold title or an image in this case kind of doing both for me real quick intro oh one thing i didn't uh that i didn't uh hit on on the previous one even though this little intro can sometimes be quickly skipped over we're going to be doing good seo with our articles right so even though this intro might get skipped over they're just simply looking at this and they see right away oh table of contents ah here's my answer the main keyword in this case, Wealthy Affiliate Hosting Review. The keyword here that I'm targeting is Wealthy Affiliate Hosting Review, I believe. In the first sentence, like not only is this the title of my article, but also in the first paragraph, you'll notice Wealthy Affiliate Reviews are everywhere, but how about a detailed Wealthy Affiliate Hosting Review? There is my target keyword right away in that, fo in that first paragraph. Good SEO will get your content ranking. Not only are we gonna have it in our title, even though my actual title is hidden, it's a, it's a nice H1 title, uh, Wealthy Affiliate Hosting Review. It's kind of redundantly shown in this image as well. By the way, in this image, the image itself, the file name for this image is Wealthy Affiliate Hosting Review. I've put that focus keyword in the image's file name as well. You place that target keyword right here in the first paragraph. And as you can see, then you just kind of, you don't want to stuff this keyword everywhere, that's keyword stuffing. You simply want to now just talk normally. But then, of course, as we get to this big first uh, heading, wealthy affiliate hosting, this H2 heading, this question, the main answer, nice and bold, it's right there. All these little SEO tactics, search engine optimization, by placing that focus keyword in these uh, critical spots, not to mention it's also in the URL for the uh, article, workformyourlaptop.com, wealthy affiliate hosting review. All these things tell Google, this is what this article is about, right? By doing that, 
it understands, okay, when someone asks questions about is Wealthy Fit a good place for hosting, what have you, now they're gonna serve up this article as the answer because you've done that good SEO. Even though some of these paragraphs may be just skipped over, there's a purpose for them. And these, in this case, placing that, doing those good SEO to let Google understand what our content is about. Now, here we have the table of contents. When they arrive at an article, and they see right away, okay, I'm in the right spot. Maybe they read a little bit of intro, maybe they don't. And they start saying, okay, is Wealthy Affiliate hosting a good idea? They get their answer. But right away, having easy to navigate uh, through this table of contents, it lets your audience know what this article is going to be about. Right away, without even needing to scroll, they can right away see, okay, is Wealthy Fit hosting a good idea, need for speed, uh, keeping your online empire safe and sound, your website is always awake, the wealthy affiliates double hosting, you know what, let me check on that. Now they can get right to the direct answer that they're looking for, and it just makes for a good user experience. Just like in this video, I have chapters set up at the bottom so you can know exactly what, how to get exactly to the answer you're looking for. It also serves when this video is starting, you might, as the video is playing, go down to that video description, open it up, and take a look. Ah, now I can see what this video is going to cover. It just creates that good user experience. And if you're interested, uh, the table of contents plugin I use, and again, I don't have any affiliation with this plugin. If you go to WordPress, it's a WordPress simple plugin. You type in table of contents. The one I use, and this is free, again, I have no affiliation with this, is this one, the Lucky WP Table of Contents. That's the one I use, very user-friendly, simple settings, you can uh, customize it however you like, change its colors, do all kinds of good stuff. Very simple, very easy, that's the one I use, but uh, there are plenty of great Table of Contents plugins. You can check any of these out from the WordPress uh, plugin repository. That's the one I use uh, in particular. Now, getting back to the class, create an answer box. When we're talking about creating your audience wants quick answers, creating an answer box, like I've shown you, by highlighting your answer paragraph, lets your audience know right away, ah, here's the answer I'm looking for. Remember, they're doing a simple quick scan of your content, right? They're only looking at 14 percent. Don't let that hurt your feelings. Make it easy for them to find the answer that they're looking for. Use bold headings like I've shown you, right? Bold headings make it easy to navigate. Splashes of color can be your friend. Train your readers to associate color with importance. I'm going to show you that in just a second. And then the final thoughts, also piggybacking on that uh, point. Final thoughts should concisely summarize creating a sense of completion. Let's go back. Let's go back to uh, workfromyourlaptop.com here. Talking about color, we can actually go, let's go to another article uh, as an example. Let's go to this one. And like I'm showing you by going into all these different articles, I'm showing you that you almost end up having like a little bit of a template for your writing, even though all these topics are completely different, right? The previous one was like a review post. This one is uh, somewhat of another review post, but on something like a, like online businesses, scams and schemes. Again, right away, let them know they're in the right place. Quick introductory paragraph, by the way, doing good SEO, the done for you online opportunities is basically the keyword right here. Uh, done for you systems, placing that target keyword right in that uh, first paragraph. We got our table of contents, then right away, here we go, big bold headline. Again, here's the keyword, done for you online business opportunities. That's the keyword I'm targeting, and then our answer. Talking about color, you'll notice a very simple color scheme with this website, you know, lots of white space, and then it's this little dark teal, right? Dark teal you see throughout, this is my answer. You'll notice again a little bit lighter teal right here. This is a little bit of a call to action, right? But what I'm doing, you notice the teal here, the teal in the links, the teal in this uh, call to action at the bottom. Then when we get to the final thoughts, even again right here in this little call to action, the teal, here's a related article, again using that same color scheme. Then we have our final thoughts again. You're training your audience that, hey, the good, important answers that you're looking for 
are right here in teal. So as uh, going with that point, when you create, you're almost training them to realize, ah, there's something important here. When you do that right here, it's a great way to use a call to action using that splash of color saying, hey, oh, by the way, here's something you might want to take a look at. If in this case, my audience, they are interested in online business, creating online business, they're, they're looking here because they've maybe been cheated in the past with done for you online business opportunities. This call to action, I am one of the resident uh, experts, teach expert teachers at Wealthy Affiliate. So in this website, what I'm doing, the majority of the website is showing, hey, if you're looking for online business training, here's how you can do it. Go here to Wealthy Affiliate. I'm one of the expert teachers. You get me as your direct support coach. That's what this call to action is doing. And as you notice throughout this website, it's that color. You're almost training your audience, training your readers to associate that color with something that's important, right? There's like a science to all this and it makes sense once you really start to think about it engagement engagement is everything when you're talking to your audience which is you know you're communicating with your audience via your website right you can't just be a robot you need to you know bring that energy it's sometimes a little bit easier like on a video for example but even in text you need to be able to kind of reel them in not just providing value, but maybe asking questions, getting them to want to participate, make it a two-way communication instead of just from you to them, right? Engage throughout the content. You've chosen the niche that you're in. Your website, let's say it's on chess. I love chess, by the way. Let's say it's on chess. You have chosen that niche because you have a, an interest in it. The most important niches to choose are the ones that you yourself have a major interest or passion for because this places you smack dab in the center of your own target audience. This is key. This brings relatability, right? Because they are just like you sharing that interest. So you need to be able to express that. Hey, I'm just like you. We are like in this club together. We enjoy the same types of things. So be passionate and connect with your audience throughout your content. Offer personal experiences. Don't just be robotic. Remember, if you are doing a review, let's say you love travel photography and you're, you have a website, the niche is all about cameras and travel cameras. You're not just gonna be listing off the features like a robot. You're gonna make sure you cover everything, but when it gets to that one feature that you actually really like, you say, hey, here's something I especially like when I am on my travels using this particular night vision, whatever, <laughs> night vision, night vision camera for travels, a little much, James Bond. Uh, but you get what I'm saying, right? I express that you are just like them and here's the features that I like that brings that, that connection to your content. At the end of your content, double down on your engagement push for comments by asking direct questions. Let's jump out of this really quick. Oh, and one more point, internally link to more relevant content. Let's go back to workfromyourlaptop.com. Let's go back to another article. Again, just kind of showing you that this is almost like a template that we do with our articles, kind of continually keeping that same format for the best user experience. Again, getting a uh, uh, right away, big, bold title. They know that they're in the right place. Quick intro paragraph in this case, how do I make my website compatible with all devices? That is the target keyword, placing that in the first paragraph. I have my easy navigation, quick, bold uh, headline, how to make my, comp my website compatible with all devices. Again, that is my focus keyword. There's my answer paragraph, the splashes of color throughout, big, bold headlines. As we get to the end of the article, you notice here, final thoughts. Here's my quick summary. Then, have you been building websites for a while or are you just starting your, oh, that's a typo. Or are you just staring your online journey? I gotta fix that. Or are you just starting your online journey? What website builders have you used in the past? Are you using your website for blogging, affiliate marketing, selling your own products? Is your audience mostly mobile or mostly desktop? What I'm doing here 
is I am engaging with them, asking questions. I'm reeling them in to say, hey, let me know. In fact, here, direct, almost like a call to action. Let me know, let me highlight this right. Let me know, <laughs> easy for me to do. Let me know your questions and comments down below. I love hearing your point of view and no question is a bad question. Double down at the end because you want your audience if they have questions to sit there and say, you know what, I, you know, this is the question I have, Eric. And when they do, make sure obviously you answer. Each question that comes up, each comment, make sure you answer. Don't leave a question unanswered. And then like we talked about with internal linking, I like to double down at the end with these related articles, right? A little quick little uh, widget that I use within my website. But throughout the content, you'll notice right here, maybe the blog roll looks out of whack. If they click on that, they're saying, okay, what does this have to do? They're, they're interested a little bit more in a blog roll. Should I use a blog roll or a static page? Which is better for your website? Now I'm bringing them again, just like if this was a traditional uh, brick and mortar store, I'm bringing them a little bit deeper and deeper into the website. The deeper they come in, the more authority you're building, also the more value you're bringing with your content, and then there's the potential for them, if this was a review on different, say, cameras or whatever, there's potential for purchases and becoming that conversion and actually creating that revenue for your online business, because at the bottom, the bottom line, our online business, these websites, we're doing this to generate revenue, right? To build consistent traffic, to generate revenue through that traffic and then generate revenue through conversions as well. So every single article we are writing has to have that intent behind it. Visuals and aesthetics. It's kind of bringing it all home, right? The visuals and aesthetics, we've been talking about this throughout. <clears throat> aesthetics aren't just about images, right? You can go overboard with images. Remember what we said at the top, keeping it simple. We're talking about writing content that converts. The content itself needs to be king. We don't want to have so many visuals that it's distracting, right? Just like we said, it's not all about images. You utilize plenty of white space in your content. You want to have that text and the content kind of flow. You want it to breathe. You don't want to have a wall of text. Keep your paragraphs short and sweet. Don't greet your audience with a wall of text. Simple, easy on the eyes. Color scheme can make your content flow like a brush, like a breath of fresh air. That's what you want out of your website. Don't overdo it with color. Keep it simple. And again, complementary is the goal, not overpowering as we've been showing you. See, there's plenty of white space throughout this. You, you know, what do I mean by white space? We don't have this long wall of text where, you know, when you look, open up a book, you have a page full of text, but that is a different experience. Someone is invested in reading that book. They are sitting down. They just want to focus on a website. Remember, your audience is only here sometimes for like 15 seconds. They're trying to hurry up and find their answer. If you have a big wall of text, this is gonna be hard to find these big, bold paragraphs. You wanna have this white space because it's easy on the eyes. You'll notice I have images sprinkled throughout, right? Here's my logo, here's me. It's kind of giving a, a welcoming uh, effect as they arrive. Uh, this right here should be bold. I'm glad I'm looking back at this. This should be nice and bold. I'm gonna to have to change that. But you wanna have plenty of white space. You can see here a relevant image as I'm talking about uh, a blog roll in this article, but it's not, filled with images. You can see right, little splashes of color, another quick image, but there's plenty of white space, short, quick paragraphs. Look right here, just a one sentence little paragraph. Images sprinkled throughout video. Your audience loves video. It keeps them on the page long. A lot of nice bullet points. Bullet points really help because it gives you the direct answers they're looking for and it's very easy on the eyes. It keeps your audience kind of there. It keeps them scrolling. The bullet points themselves are very easy on the eyes and they kind of bold and intensify what this point is about. 
this is what you want. These aesthetics mean a lot. And then of course, like I said, the simple color scheme, as you notice throughout all these articles that work from your laptop.com, simple color scheme, just this, these blues. That's really all I'm using. Little red here to make this a little bit more intense of a call to action, right? But simple colors, easy on the eyes, easy flowing. You want the visuals to complement the content, but not to take over the content, right? Very, very important. Last but not least, the next level user experience. How do we write this content that converts and really take it up that notch? Well, it's really all about bringing it all home, bringing it all together. Don't tell or sell to your audience. Show them, right? We talked about that briefly at the top. Make sure you're actually giving value. Don't focus on trying to get conversions. Focus instead on trying to bring value. Honesty is the best policy. Never promote a product or a service that you wouldn't use yourself. Don't chase high commissions, right? Never recommend a product based on a commission. A lot of the articles and reviews that I do on these high ticket affiliate marketing uh, training platforms, one of the big issues that I have with them is they are so focused on these high ticket items that it becomes more and more about how can I just sell this and get a commission as opposed to is this something my audience should really have? Does it really bring value? People start chasing the commission instead of really bringing the value. When you're bringing value, your audience sees it and you can be honest, right? For example, all the things I'm telling you in this class, I'm not selling you anything. I'm showing you direct examples, then even showing you my own website. These are the practices that I use. These are the practices that work. This is what I use, why I use them, the thinking behind using them. I'm not trying to sell you anything. We're just simply providing value. When you do that, you end up having users or viewers, in this case on YouTube, that say, man, I want to see another class from him. What other classes does this guy have to offer? That's what we want to do when we're considering our audience and that user experience. Your audience loves video. If and when you can have a relevant YouTube video embedded into your uh, content, it doesn't even have to be your own. Just a simple YouTube video that has to do with the topic, make it relevant. Uh, also, you may want to watch, obviously, the video yourself because if that video is really uh, salesy or it's leading them away, you know, there's a chance your audience could bite on that hook and just <laughs> leave your website. So make sure that it has to do with your content, but also that it's not going to just distract and take them away, right? It keeps your audience on your page longer. The longer they're on your page, it's very similar to them being in that store longer, the higher chance of conversions. YouTube goes hand in hand with website content. It really does. It's perfectly complementary to that content without distracting. Class summary, what have we learned? Don't beat around the bush. Answer the topic at hand directly and early. Remember, your audience has a very short attention span, so get to the point right away, then elaborate. Remember the simplicity of good SEO. Remember those focus keywords in that first opening paragraph, in those bold headings, in the title, in the URL. Even though your audience may be skipping through those introductory paragraphs and skipping through some of those headlines, there is a point there. Make sure you utilize good SEO. Bold, easy to read headings make for easy browsable content. Remember, your audience is only reading 14% on average of your overall content. So make these quick, bold points that you're making easy to find through those bold headings and subheadings. Use a table of contents plugin. Make the navigation very easy for your audience. Engage throughout your content and double down at the end as you encourage commenting. When they engage, guess what? If they have a question for you and they leave a question, guess what they're gonna do? They're going to come back when you've answered it. More than likely, they've ticked the little box that says, let me know when uh, this question, when this comment has been replied to. Now they're coming back. This is returning traffic, right? There is a reason for all this. There's a science to all this. White space, timely images, video, and 100% honesty will create that next level user experience that you're looking for. 
I hope you have enjoyed this class, writing content that converts, understanding how to write content that converts for your website. Please follow me on, uh, I have this brand new Twitter, Eric Jason Cantu, at Eric Jason Cantu. You can follow me also on Instagram. That's where I share all the travels. I'm a travel addict. I solo travel all over the world. I share all the amazing places and sites and uh, people that I've met thanks to affiliate marketing, all the doors it has opened for me. If you like that kind of stuff, I have a lot of fun there on Instagram. As always, I hope you will like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, leave them down in the comments below. What hurdles have you had when you're writing content? Are there any points I've made that you disagree with or that you maybe need a little bit of clarification on? Let me know. Do you see what I'm doing right now? See how I'm doubling down at the end of the content, creating engagement? See how I've had engagement throughout? All these points not only apply for websites, but they actually apply throughout regardless of the platform platform your content is on. Like I said, my name is Eric from workfreelaptop.com. I'll see you next time.